So I'm gonna be completely honest, I've been trying to think of what I can do that is comic related for May the 4th. Because it's fucking Star Wars Day, I need to do something. And then I remembered something. The very first comic that I ever officially owned was a Star Wars comic. Given it was a prequel comic, but it was still a Star Wars comic. In fact, it is this Star Wars comic. My entire family are nerds. And one day when me and my dad were walking through the mall when I was like, Five, we walked by a comic stop. For those of you too young to remember, which I can't believe I have to say now, comic stop was like GameStop for comic books. We just couldn't really use comic stop to eat the rich. And luckily for us, it was free comic book day. And we ended up picking up that beauty that I ended up reading so many times that it literally fell apart. Like disintegrated in my fucking hands type fell apart. And that was the birth of literally my entire obsession with comic books. So may the fourth be with you and go pick up a comic book. Happy Revenge of the Fifth, everybody. There's Revenge of the, the Six. Fuck it, we're doing a Sith video today. In honor of the dark side of the Star Wars days, I would like to talk about Darth fucking Vader. And how all of his most badass movies Moment. are restricted to the comic books specifically. Yeah, that's right. I bet you thought that Darth Vader was pretty badass in the movies, right? You, you, you don't know the half of it. How about let's talk about the fact that before the events of Return of the Jedi, Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker had another fight where Darth Vader just straight up jacked Luke's lightsaber and fought him with it. Or how about the time that he went to go and meet Jabba the Hutt and he just casually fucking choked him out like you do. That's like walking into Don Corleone's office and then strangling him in front of everybody. It's a fucking power move. Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, while he was there, he just slaughtered a camp of Tusken Raiders just cause. Did he just fucking javelin his lightsaber through a Rancor's head? Or how about when all these rebel soldiers told him he's surrounded and he said, all I am surrounded by is fear and dead men. Vader's fucking scary, man. So, um... Does anyone want to hear about the time the Nightwing kind of became a little fashy? TikTok doesn't like when I say the, the word that I mean to say, so I'm just gonna say the Empire. The Twisty X Brigade. Charlie Chaplin's overzealous fan club. Yeah, does anyone want to hear about the time that Nightwing kind of became one? Don't worry, it barely made sense in the story either. There's a storyline by the name of Nightwing the New Order. Oh, uh, you, you got the right idea, but n no, not that New Order. Although you're, you're pretty close. There you go, that's not better in any way. Basically, the story goes like this. In 2039, there's a big war between superheroes and supervillains. It ends up claiming the life of Batman, which inspires Nightwing to activate a device that depowers every single metahuman on the planet, which turns him into kind of a celebrity, which then inspires him to create a fascist police state where he then tracks down, depowers, or imprisons any metahumans still left with their powers, which most of the Bat family join, as do the Green Lanterns. That's a bit, yikes. Let me know if you want to know more. Yeah, yeah, they did indeed. Let's get into more shit that Nightwing the New Order did. After Nightwing activates the device that takes away all metahuman's powers, him and Starfire end up getting together, even though he was the person who recently depowered her and is not hiding it. In fact, they even have a kid together. And Nightwing starts openly hunting metahumans for the government while still with a former metahuman. So she does the sensible thing and leaves. In this story, they also had Superman kill Batman. It wasn't his choice. The bad guys used black kryptonite to poison his mind and make him do it, but still. Nightwing's son develops superpowers in the story and Nightwing actually has to grapple with what to do with that information. Look, look at how they massacred my boy. I don't know what I'm more insulted by, the fact that they had Dick Grayson Nightwing become the leader of a fascist police state or the fact that Tim Drake supported it or the fact that Jason and Todd just isn't even fucking mentioned. It's a, uh, it's an interesting story to say the least. So this is a difficult question, not only because taste is subjective, so I can't particularly say if it's good or not to everybody. Case in point, I don't like much of anything from the New 52, save for a few Batman stories and most of the art direction, but some people think that most of it was great. So I have absolutely zero authority to judge if you would like this at all. This story might disgust you, or it might be the best thing you ever read. Personally, I don't think it's a bad story, I just think it doesn't really focus on Nightwing as N Nightwing. Like, yeah, his relationship with the Titans is brought up later in the story, but that feels like it could have been swapped out with any superhero who has a team who has superpowers on it. And ultimately, yes, the story is against this sort of government. But Dick stays so steadfast to his beliefs for so long in the story, even after his son is revealed to be a medic, human that it kind of takes me out of it. Like, this isn't Dick Grayson. He wouldn't do this. Do I think it's worth a read? Yeah, of course. The art's good, and it's a different take that I would have never thought of. Do I personally enjoy it? Nah, not particularly. You gotta make that decision for you.
So, this doesn't really have anything to do with comics, and I know that technically the Star Wars days are already over, but, you know, I've heard some people call it Star Wars Month anyway, so I'm just gonna go with that. I don't give a goddamn what the fuck Disney says, what the fuck George Lucas says, I don't give a damn what nobody says. The 2003 animated Star Wars The Clone Wars miniseries is fucking canon. But panic conflicts with the movies. Don't fucking care, it's canon. But its storyline conflicts with the 3D animated show. Fault to the 2D animated show until it no longer conflicts. But what if it just keeps conflicting? Pick the better story for that specific story arc and the rest of it fucking counts. This show was the shit and it should be fucking canon. So that is exactly how the fuck I'm gonna treat it and I don't give a shit what nobody says. Y'all have a nice fucking day. So I don't usually do stuff like this, but I want to show you guys something cool I bought recently. So something that I personally enjoy doing a lot is thrifting. I like going to thrift stores and buying shit. It used to be clothes because there's no specific style at a thrift store. You can always find something cool there. But more recently, after I found a damn near pristine edition of 300 at a Goodwill, I've started looking through the book section just to see what they have, see if they have any comics I don't have, see if they have anything cool that I would want to get, that sort of stuff. Something you also might not know about me is for fun, I like to draw comic book characters. For like my school and eventually my job, I do 3D art for video games and texture art more specifically. But the thing that actually got my start in art is comic book art. I like to draw superheroes, I like to draw comic book characters, I like to draw comics. Which leads me to this badass thing that I found. This is the 75th anniversary poster book of DC Comics covers. It is positively filled with influential comic book covers of the past 75 years. But what's really cool is on the back of every page there's a little blurb describing the history of that comic book cover. As an artist, this is a really cool book to have, if only for the inspiration. Did I have plans for tonight? Absolutely I did. I had this whole thing mapped out. I was gonna finish off doing what I was doing at like 9 p.m. I was gonna go down and I was gonna start editing the YouTube videos again. I ordered dinner in celebration. It was way too much. I didn't give a shit and I turned on Castlevania season four to watch while I was eating. And now I ate so much that I feel like my stomach's about to fucking explode. There ain't no way I'm not fucking binging the rest of this shit. You know, in theory, I'm supposed to be on a diet and regulating my time correctly. I would laugh because that's a funny joke now. But if I laugh, I'm pretty sure that I am going to pop like a fucking balloon. Yes. This, this is peak attractiveness right now. This had absolutely nothing to do with anything. Y'all have a nice night. I'm clearly enjoying mine. Have y'all ever considered what it would be like to touch a superhero? Not not in any weird way, but like th to physically touch somebody with something like super strength or someone like Mr. Fantastic. Like think about it, Superman's skin is dense enough that it can't be penetrated by anything really and every muscle in his body is strong enough to basically crush planets if he wanted to mark wade described the sound of superman and wonder woman kissing like granite scraping steel so like if you were to like physically touch him there would be no give it would be virtually the same as touching a warm weird smooth flesh textured cement wall in contrast to someone like mr fantastic or plastic man who virtually has no bones think about that think about shaking someone's hand and not being able to feel the bones anywhere. Their entire body would be basically the same texture as the meat of your hand. I don't know, weird thought. Alright, hold on, hold the fuck on. I just, I can't, I can't stop thinking about this. Here's a bunch of things that would immediately give Superman away as not being a normal fucking human being. Why won't it bend? Lana? Lana, come on, can we talk about this? You know what? Yeah, yeah, you know what? Yeah, let's fucking talk about it then. Ken, why does kissing you feel like kissing a fucking stone mannequin? Those are... Th th those are called statues, Lana. Don't you dodge the fucking question, Kent! Whew, thanks for inviting me out to the football game, guys. This was fun. Hey, you're a hell of a player, Kent. Good game. <laughs> Oh, 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 I, I am, I am so sorry. My hand is shattered. I mean, I offered to move the planet out of the way of the comet, but for some reason, if you offer to move Earth off of its orbit out of the way of a speeding comet, you're irreparably damaging the rotation of the Earth around the sun, and I don't know, I, I stopped listening after that. He was kind of being a dick. C can I fucking help you? Why won't your ears bend? So I was just flipping through YouTube and I saw the new Venom trailer. And it got me thinking about one of my favorite facts about Venom. So when you think of superheroes, you usually don't think of people who are particularly... Skinny? Usually superheroes are shredded like Greek gods, and most of the time there's very little explanation for that. Other than Batman, his, work, his workout's hell, and I, I should know. Usually it's something like, a magic spider gave me abs, lightning gave me abs. But, but that's not the case with Venom. You see, both times Venom's been adapted into movie form, he hasn't been particularly 
buff? Like, don't get me wrong, Tom Hardy looks great in the movie, but he's not, like, the bodybuilder jacked. Yeah, yeah, so, like, come book Eddie Brock is just fucking yoked. I mean, shit, there are multiple, completely separate montages of him just working out. And would you like to know why he worked out so much? You see, after he bonds with Venom, it's because Venom amplifies his already existing strength, so if he's stronger, Venom's stronger. But at first, it's because he's depressed. Yeah, after Spider-Man revealed that he was kind of a shit reporter, he just got really depressed and started bodybuilding to help with the stress. So yeah, Venom's the most relatable supervillain now. So I'm gonna describe a character's backstory to you, and I want you to tell me who that character is. Okay, you ready? You sure? All right, let's go. A brilliant soldier who would otherwise not be accepted into the military is accepted into a specialized government program. This program is centered on the idea of creating a super soldier. Our brilliant blonde haired soldier is entered into the program and given the serum and is one of the only people to ever survive the process. After surviving the process, they don a scaly blue uniform, which they usually use to fight similarly costumed super individuals and often end up fighting the government that originally gave them the super soldier serum as well as multiple secret shady government organizations. Okay, who did I just describe? I'll give you a minute. All right, you got it? No, it's not Captain America. That's Deathstroke's backstory too. Fucking weird, right? Yeah, Deathstroke is basically just if Captain America was a mercenary. So I haven't really posted anything in two days because I've had a fucking th long couple of days, but I had a thought. Now, this isn't particularly comic book based, but at the same time, I'm, I'm a general nerd. I'm not just a comic book nerd. You know that trope in movies and TV where an animated character meets a real life character? Like SpongeBob meeting David Hasselhoff or the entirety of Osmosis Jones. Yeah. You ever thought about that exchange through the eyes of the animated character? Imagine meeting a being that is infinite times more detailed than you are. Would you perceive them in the way that you have perceived your regular world, such as an animated character perceiving a normal human being as two-dimensional? Or would your brain just explode not being able to comprehend the fact that this being defies all known logic of your universe? Now with all that in mind, is Cthulhu just the reader? Like, of our universe, like your brain just can't comprehend what he looks like because he is the real person and we are the book he's reading. I promise I'm sober, it's just a thought. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. This. On what account is the Hulk worthy? Okay, so let's get into this. So the short answer is that the Ultimates were fucking weird. You see, that clip is from the animated Ultimates movie, which was based on the Ultimate Comics line of Marvel. You see, the Ultimates line was kind of Marvel's way of reinventing and reinvigorating the Marvel Universe, updating it to the modern age. It's what DC ended up basing the New 52 on, except Marvel didn't fuck up their entire main line of comics with it. God damn it, I'm never not going to be bitter about that. The thing about the Ultimates, though, is they tried to be a little bit more realistic-ish. Like, Captain America actually acts like he's from the 40s. Hawkeye doesn't just use a bow. Black Widow's an actual fucking Russian spy. Shit like that. But with that in mind, at the time of that movie being made, it was a question if Thor was even a god? And with that, if any of his shit was actually magic. He might have just been a really strong, crazy dude with really good tech. So at the time, his hammer wasn't confirmed to be magic and didn't have a worthiness rule. It was just stupid fucking heavy. One part if you haven't watched it already, go back and watch part one. I'm gonna be ranting about the Ultimates in this one. You see, the Ultimate series started with Ultimate Spider-Man where they tried to do an updated retelling of Spider-Man's origin and people just fucking loved it. And that series ended up spawning the Ultimates line, which most Marvel movies nowadays are actually kind of based on. The original X-Men movies were kind of based off of the Ultimate X-Men series, you can really tell in the black leather suits, but the Ultimates are definitely a, um, a victim of their time. Grimdark and, uh, you know, overly excessive violence was, well, it was the fashion at the time. I'm just gonna say some shit that happens in the Ultimates line and you can make your own assessment. Captain America beats a man to a bloody fucking stain on the floor while screaming, do you think this A on my head stands for France? Tony Stark and Black Widow end up on the hub, if you know what I'm saying. Sorry, Mom, I know you watch these. Wolverine watches Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, who, by the way, are his adopted kids in this version. Bond. You were gonna stick with that one. Blob eats Wasp. Ant-Man eats Blob. It's a trip. More in part three. This is technically a part three, part two, whatever the fuck. Go back and watch the other part. Here's some even more just, you know, weird shit that happened in the Ultimates. You know the fan idea of Hank Pym? Like, not the canon one, but, like, the fan version of him where he's an abusive shit shithead that nobody really likes, that everybody kind of agrees that he is, but he just isn't written in the comics that way? Yeah. Yeah, U Ultimate Ant-Man is exactly like that. He attacked Wasp with a swarm of ants while saying if he killed her, no one would ever know. He's, uh, 
He's a bit fucked up. Not to let Ultimate Wasp off the hook completely, though, because she not only is accepting of, but also openly encourages Wanda and Pietro's family bonding. Still, st still, still sticking with that one. Hulk has a very shallow masculinity. Oh, and he openly states that he's horny multiple fucking times. Wolverine, while body swapped with a 16-year-old Peter Parker, good God, don't please don't ask about it, it's weird, tries to fuck Mary Jane. The fuck, man? Yeah, no, I'm uncomfortable now, I think I'm done. Let me know if you want more, though. All right, I was actually getting ready for bed this time, and then I read this comment, and I think I should specify something. Ultimate Thor's hammer is not Stormbreaker. Stormbreaker is Beta Ray Bill's hammer. This is Stormbreaker, and this is Ultimate Mjolnir. The reason for the confusion, and it is still confusing to me as well, is that in Infinity War, when they wanted to give Thor a new weapon, they decided to give him a design based off of Ultimate Thor's hammer. Which is fitting, they based most of the universe off of the Ultimates, it's only fair that they give Thor the weapon of the Ultimate Thor. The problem is, is that that hammer is just called Mjolnir in the Ultimates universe. And at that time, at least, there was no plans to bring Beta Ray Bill into anything. I have no idea if there is now. At the time, he was just a background detail in Ragnarok. So they just took the name of Beta Ray Bill's hammer, because it sounded cool, and gave it to the new weapon that Thor was wielding in the movies. Thus, this design being known as Stormbreaker. So to recap, MCU Stormbreaker, Ultimate Mjolnir, comic book Stormbreaker. And that is going to be it for this month. I just want to give a special thank you to all of my brand new patrons. Magu, Linda Macker, Pandora A, Ravenash260, Tarara, Virgil, Great Nerd Beard, Caitlin Ween, Katrina Spore, Br'er Rabbit, Draven Miller, Michael Rowe, Puppercut, Quiet Knoll, and Susan Wiener. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, and I will see you next time.